you're listening to the Appleton Rhea Podcast, a podcast dedicated to understanding the latest tips, tricks, and techniques to be successful in today's market of real estate investing. Appleton Rhea Podcast. Get ready. Here's the next episode. Hello once again. You are listening to, just like I said before, the Appleton Rhea Podcast. My name is Dan Alborn. Jackie Conkle is with me once again. What? What? How you doing? I'm great. How are you today? Hey, it is another great day to be living. You know, every day I wake up, I, I, I don't take that for granted. And I'm not even that old, but I appreciate every day I wake up and I'm still here. So uh, we are here to bring knowledge for you. And I think this topic is going to be so helpful because oh, yeah. um, many times, Jackie, when we help people in real estate, there's a few fears that people have. Yeah. And one of the big things is how do I evaluate the deal? Yes. How do I really know it is a deal? Isn't it a deal? How do I figure these things out? So today's podcast, we're going to help you evaluate deals like a pro so you can quickly be in and out, make offers, because that's the name of the game, isn't it? It is. I I mean, for Brett and I, the first 10 months in our business, right? Like we were looking at tons of houses. We were talking to all the sellers. Yeah. And then like a lot of them, we ghosted. Like we didn't even call them back because we had those fears, right? Is it a deal? Isn't it? What did we miss? Do we do our numbers right? Or the numbers don't look right, but we don't don't know how how to do any creative yeah. financing like can we get the money is a investor gonna look at this yeah. and, and you know a hard money lender right. and still give us some money will they call it a deal yeah. and yeah you're right I mean those right. fears are there and um, and sometimes it is a deal and sometimes it isn't so yeah. how do we know Dan yeah so we'll talk a little bit about that yeah. and now this is obviously a precursor that you've either had deals come to you whether it be right? a wholesaler or you're doing some marketing right that's a whole nother podcast which we've <laughs> talked about in its own right but this is where you're actually going to a homeowner appointment yeah. and now you need to analyze the deal. Mm-hmm. What are my numbers, right. right? So we're gonna talk about some tools, tips, techniques to allow you really, when you get more proficient in this, it's a matter of within minutes you can yeah. come in, but there's also some pre-work and that's I think where we start. You right. know, going to a homeowner appointment, you kind of have to have some preliminary numbers going in, do you not? Well, I mean, I feel like you need to know what the competition's doing, you know, so you want to look at your comps ahead of time, so you kind of know what your ARV is going in, even though once you see the house, you can kind of lock it in. You'll think about, okay, what am I going to do the house, and how does that compare to what's been on the market? Right. You know, have the houses that have recently sold in that area been totally, you know, renovated, or are they selling them still looking like grandma's house, or somewhere in between? Yeah. So you kind of got to know going in, like, how much rehab am I have to gonna have to gonna be doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How much rehab will I need to do to bring it up to what the rest of the market's mm-hmm. doing currently, and then what will that bring? So yeah, a little bit of pre work there. Yeah, and that's important. I mean, we just did a property on a ribbon, and really there was none. Yeah. There's not a lot of rehabbers in ribbon, so a lot of stuff in the market was a little older, dated. Sure. Now we still did a fine product and it really updated everything, but. There's a point where how much updating do you do? To so, some degree, you're overdoing it. Right, yeah. correct. So you have to kind of, like you said, match what's on the market. That way you'll be priced accordingly. And if yeah. you stick an extra 50000 into it because you put granite and stainless and crazy things in there that you would <laughs> want in your own personal home, Don't the reality is you probably won't get it back on the sell you, side. You probably will not. And right. we had really good guidance on that in the beginning too like even just looking like we had the opportunity to add a second bathroom Mm -hmm. and looking at all the comps all the comps only had one bathroom right so we were told why would you add a second one when you're going to be exactly like all the other houses in that area on the market that that second bathroom's not Mm -hmm. really going to give you any extra bang right because it would have been in the basement anyway sure and we're like Yeah. And I mean, that was early on, right? We're still learning. And that was really good advice. Sold that house in literally um, negative time because the people were standing outside of my open house (laughs) waiting for me to unlock the door. And when I unlocked the door, they came in, they literally ran through the house and sat down and wrote an offer at the open house. Like it was... They wanted the house, and if I'd had a second bathroom, they would have offered no more. For sure. Went to matter. Absolutely. So you got to compare apples to apples. Always. One of the things that we hear a lot, Jackie, specifically for newer investors, and sometimes the getting into investing, well, how do I get comps? I'm not a right. realtor. Yeah. I don't have access to MLS, right? Because you have to be licensed in order to have that. And it's like, well, do I become a realtor? And that's that's a whole other conversation. I know. <laughs> but there are tools out <laughs> in the marketplace today that can give you a good understanding of what's sold 
And I think you can, and you do a really good job of explaining how you can use Zillow or even tools like Realtor.com to kind of figure out comps, right? The crazy thing is, that's the thing. Whenever you say Zillow, people think, oh, but this estimate isn't right. I didn't say this estimate, right? right? Use Zillow.com as a tool. You know, you can go in there and you can see what's recently sold. You can even set up like... How long ago did it sell? Did right. it sell within the last three months, within the last six months? You can set your parameters so you can pick um, the address of the property that you're looking at and pull a perimeter and yep. say only within this area mm-hmm. or only within this zip code or whatever. And then you can say only three to four bedrooms or only, you know, a thousand to 1500 right. square feet. You can set it up just like a realtor does in the MLS. Yeah. But here's the thing. Then it's going to pull all the houses. My biggest um, bang for the buck when I'm looking at comps, it mm-hmm. takes a lot longer, yeah, yeah. but I like to look at all the pictures. Yep, absolutely. Because, again, the apples to apples thing, right? Yes. And that, I find, is the biggest you know thing that ticks me off with agents is they'll like run this CMA and all they're going to do is say, you know, in this general area, <laughs> right. their area is always too big. Yep. But in this general area with, you know, three bedrooms, two baths, 1,500 square feet. Okay, but what does it look like inside? Correct. Is it a two-story? Is it a ranch? Yeah. Is it a story and a half? I yeah. mean, it matters, right? Absolutely. People don't want a, a triplex as much as they want a ranch. 100%. Yep. And vice versa. Like, all those things yeah. matter. And was it updated? Wasn't it updated? Yeah. Did that agent call uh, a bathroom in the basement that's not even mm-hmm. finished a bathroom? Right. And say it's two bathrooms Correct. and it's really not? You know, so you really want to look through those pictures. And then once you start doing that, Dan, and you're working in the same area, yeah. you and I both know you're just going to start to know. Right. And and with any of these offers that you make, it always starts with what can you sell it for? So what we're talking about here is how you can figure out your sale value, right? And comparing apples to apples. You know, if you have a realtor that you trust and, and can do good comps, because not all realtors are the same, let's be honest. They really are. Um, there's some really good ones out there, and then there's some ones that maybe shouldn't be a realtor. Um, <laughs> but even if you don't have that person in your back pocket to help you, you can still go online and find tools to really get a good semblance of what you're at. Look at the pictures like Jackie said, and now you know that number. Yeah. That's the first thing, even before before I ever go to homeowner appointment, you I need to know. know. Yes. What is my what is my if you go to homeowner point without knowing that you're behind the eight ball. You gotta at least have like an idea. Right. Right? And like when you get there and you realize it's a lot bigger than you thought or right. it's chopped up and it's a weird house or it's really open and you were expecting it to be like yes. all the other houses and it's like just amazing when you walk mm-hmm. in. Now you can go back and sharpen the pencil, 100%. but at least you had an idea. Correct. Yeah, yeah. it gives For you the sure. ballpark going in and once you're there, then you start refining that so that's excellent so once you have that basis the next thing is the other question that people struggle with when they come to us and ask well how do i do this right it's like how do i figure the rehab and that is a loaded question but there's also tools that can really help you now this is where you maybe have to stick some money into it or build a good relationship with a local contractor absolutely and i mean if you're brand new you know that money is going to be well spent to hire a contractor and go through the worst house you can find (laughs) and have them like write up an actual bid and label everything out like either by the square foot by the linear foot by the by the square yeah you know whether it's drywall or roofing or carpeting or uh countertops or cabinets you know by the linear foot, I mean, whatever it takes so that you could use those numbers and go forward. Absolutely. Or you could always spend the money on one of the uh, estimator um, softwares that are out there. And we have one of our own. 100%. Well. Yeah. I mean, through the Appleton Rio, we have one that you can purchase. It's a great tool. It's based on local numbers. So you know yep. you're dealing with real facts. Otherwise, there's a lot of other great tools in the marketplace. You just type it in the internet. You'd be surprised <laughs> how many people will be hounding you for the, to buy their program. And they're all good tools depending right. on what you're looking to do, right? Or create your own like we did in the very beginning, right? Absolutely. We created a sheet and again, it went off of those yes. uh, those contractors that walked through with us. And we made our own sheet saying, okay, if we ever have to replace right. this, this is how he estimated what it would cost to replace those Yeah, things, and, you know? and even yeah. if you don't have any real acumen in, let's say, regards to um, you know, construction, if you can you count windows, can you count doors? Yeah. Can you have an idea of based on square footage, you know, how many, how much is it gonna cost to paint a fifteen hundred square foot home? You can create all these formulas, build out an Excel spreadsheet or find a <laughs> VA to do that if you give them the right. formulas if you don't know how, and they can create a tool for you, right? Absolutely. Um, and then maybe having a contractor compare it to your tool, do the numbers jive, you know, stuff like that. You can actually really you can hone that in for yourself personally. There is some time invested in that, right. or to Jackie's point, 
find a tool that's find already been used, primed and proven, um, and you can rock that out. So now you yeah. know, you know the the sale price of what what it could sell for, you know, and now you're gonna have what the rehab cost is. Yep. Okay, what's the next step in the equation, right? You got to figure out what can I offer, right? Or yeah, am I so missing something? Th- no, there's a couple different yeah. formulas, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, most people have heard of the, uh, you know, you take the ARV, what it's going to sell for, that after repair value, yep. you multiply it by 70%. Now, some people are using 65 or 60. Heck, in the market we just had, oh, some people word. were going like crazy with that. 80, 80, in some yeah. markets, they're at 885. Well, you yeah. know, you got to know your market, right? Again, knowing the market, knowing the economy, kind of having a little bit of foreshadowing with your thumb on the pulse of what's yep. going on so you can kind of look out, you know, three to six months and sure. try to see what do you think is going to happen. Right. Not like we have a crystal ball, but... no then um, using the formula that fits you. So, you know, the ARV times 70% or whatever percentage you're using uh, minus the cost of repairs. Right. You know, and in the 70% formula, that 30 that's left over, that's your your holding and selling and closing costs yep. and your profit. And your profit, You know, yeah. generally about 10% is your holding, selling, Correct. and closing. Yep. And about 20 is your profit. So right. that's why that formula has worked so well for so long. It's tried and true. <laughs> and the one thing, yeah. I, just take a step back, you know, when you're calculating a the after repair value, ARV, yeah. um, don't play in the clouds. And what mm. I mean by that is you're going to get yourself a range. Let's say, you know, a median home price in our market is around $180,000. So sure. let's say you're with 180 to 200. You're like, I can sell this for 200. We are six, this is in any market. You're six months away from a complete turn in the market. Anytime. Anytime. It doesn't matter how hot it is. Like Jackie said, we don't have a crystal ball. We always, when we buy, we always buy on the lower end, if not the lowest end of that, because we're playing in real numbers. Yeah. Could you get that bump to 206 months? Absolutely. That it's is possible. cherry on top when it happens. But you can't go backwards. Right. So what I'm saying is always play in real numbers. Don't overestimate. Don't overvaluate. Don't get um, swooned by the numbers <laughs> of what you can make on profit. Be a realistic Make your margins, and if it's over and above that, that's when you make those really nice, really nice paydays. But at least you're setting yourself up to win because it really stinks to go through all the work and get to the right. end and break even yep. or go to closing with a check just to get rid of a house and you know, and have that anxiety yeah. while it's sitting on the market and yeah. you're realizing you're not going to get what you need. Like yeah. Those are some pretty sleepless nights. Yeah, We've had absolutely. a couple of uh, yep. close calls in the past. <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, absolutely. But, but so, so once you have that number locked in, you're comfortable, you're conservative with it, your rehab numbers you feel pretty strong with based upon the tools that you have, um, then the last things we talked about is the formulation, which is the standard mail, which Jackie walked through of what that is. That's the 70% sure. times, you know, your, your after repair value minus repairs. But there's other formulas. And the other thing is comes back to is really having a good conversation with that seller, right? Yeah. Why are they looking to sell? Because that can really be the key that turns a no deal into deal. a phenomenal deal. And we've have I mean we have stories for days story we could talk after about that, yeah. Story after story. But you're right, Dan. I mean, we've talked about this before. Probably the yeah. number one thing that you need to know from that seller is what do they need? Right. Why are they selling? Why do they call you instead of a realtor? Mm-hmm. You know, so what is their why for selling and what are they what's the biggest thing they need right mm-hmm. now? And yeah. sometimes after you know that, like there's more of a motivation to sell and get it gone quick because they just don't want to deal with yeah. it than there is the money side. Well, those are great opportunities to give them what they need or what they want mm-hmm. and still make what you need or what you want with some creative financing in between. Absolutely. Let me tell you this. In my business right now, <laughs> I personally don't care what they want for the property. Yeah. Like when I when we Just do how some, can I get there? we do some cold calling, you know, and I actually don't even really have them ask what they want for the property. Yeah. I'm like, are you with, are you open for an offer? Right, great. If I could tell you, you know, I I have so many opportunities where I've actually talked to people. They had a number coming in. We've had them come off thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars from yep. their price. You want to know why? I listened to their situation, found out what they want. The number was just a number to them. It had no value. But when I found out what the real behind the scenes. Well, I need to be able to be flexible so I can close this in 90 days. Yeah. I need to be able to find a place. Or I need to pay off this loan first or I need to create a trust because some of this money has to go into it. I mean, these yeah. are just some of the stories I'm telling you Lately. throughout the cuff yeah. of this is how I've created a situation that we get at the price that makes sense for us right. but also benefits them first, right? We right. get them out of a very challenging situation. Here's how we do that and here's the price at what it costs. Yep. You know, So if you can get good at that, and if that's not where you're at today, well, that's where you team up maybe with a partner in some of these situations. But once you know their why, 
it's not so much I want one hundred fifty thousand dollars for this property. Right. You have to figure out well, really, why do you need one hundred fifty? If they have one hundred fifty thousand dollar mortgage. Even then, you could still get creative. Yeah, now depending. you're working on the creative because that's what just happened to us this Absolutely. year, right? And then yes. we were just said, "Well, what if we just took over your mortgage? Yeah. What if you walk away with nothing but you lose nothing? Yeah. Because to get what you owe is pretty much right. top dollar right now. And they were like, "You do that? Yeah. Yep, sure will. And we still don't have to clean the house. Nope, it's in our numbers already, yeah. and this will work. But you know, only if we can take over your really low, Correct. you know, interest mortgage and, and just make those payments until we sell it. Yeah. And, and guess what? With that. They're happy because their oh, problem is solved. Yeah. You're happy because you got a great deal and the numbers work because of you had to get creative on terms. Right. So in majority of the people that come through and specifically for new investors, you know, they teach you the simple formulas and you give your cash offer. So that's really the, when most people come to, uh, specifically in this market, you're having multiple people go to the oh, same yeah. homeowner appointment, right? <laughs> and I'd say 80 to 90% of them are all these cash offers. Yeah. But what if you came with multiple offers? Yeah. That's always been my favorite thing. Yeah, right? agreed. Hey, I could buy it for cash for this, but you know, if you needed a little more, or I see your mortgage is over that, do you have money to take, bring to closing or would, if you don't, well, I could offer a little more if you'd offer seller financing. Let me show you how that works. Mm -hmm. And that's my favorite question. If I could show you how it works and yes. I could show you all the contracts and documents and how you're protected and I could help to make sure that you fully understood it and it made sense, would you be willing to do it? I don't know if you – this is a podcast, but I want you to go back and save what Jackie just said <laughs> because when you want gold words of what to say and how to talk to a seller, how could a seller be like, no, I don't want that? Right. I mean, they're going to be like, tell me more, Jackie. Well, I'll tell you why most people don't get seller financing is because they, they're they talking to a seller who doesn't understand it. Correct. This isn't what they do every day. This is what we do every right. day. So you have to make sure, just say, listen, what I'm saying, I know it sounds way up here, but I do this all the time. Yes. I'm extremely comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. I would make sure first that you were, you know what, bring your wife, bring yep. whoever you want, like you could have an attorney review it afterwards if you needed to, but if I were able to share, share with you and show you every single step, all the contracts mm -hmm. and exactly how you're protected, and it made sense to you, yes. would you be willing to do it? As long as it was in your favor yeah. and it made sense. Well, yeah. And then we set a whole separate appointment. Mm -hmm. You know, I very rarely, I mean, there have been times where I've sat down with them right there, but I very rarely do that. There's usually someone. Well, there's that are, more to that, right? Yeah. It's not as simple like here's my offer sign. Right. There's more moving pieces. But now, guess what? All those other offers kind of go by the wayside. They do. You become their favorite, even Correct. though they're not really sure yet, but it just sounds better. And, the logic, and they're excited. Yeah, and, and we've talked about this before, but when you make a transaction yeah. with anything, if all things are equal, who do you choose? The one you like. The one you like. You yeah. buy and sell with who you like. So if you build a relationship with them and show them they have options, mm -hmm. holy smokes, that's where you can really turn a no deal into a deal. Um, and a win-win. And a win-win, right? Yes. They are happy. You're happy. Everyone walks away in a, in a good situation. And I know if you're newer right now, you're like, well, that sounds great, Dan and Jackie, <laughs> but, but how do you do that? Well, then if you're good at figuring out the why, it's the same thing with money. Yeah. If you're good at figuring out the why and there's motivation and there's opportunity, that's where you then need to find networking with other local Absolutely. investors in your market who take down these kind of deals. Yep. Because I guarantee you, I don't care where you're at. If someone, if you came to some an investor and said, hey, if I brought you a great terms deal, would you be open to it? As long as the numbers work, any seasoned investor would be happy to do a joint venture. Yep. And if they weren't, that's not someone you want to do business with anyway. But <laughs> most investors Lose have that numbers. mindset. like. <laughs> You know, 50% or a percentage yes. of something is better than 0% of nothing, right? 100% of nothing. Yeah, something along that. You know, <laughs> you get what I'm saying here, people. We both just watched Tommy Boy, so, you know, it's got to be your goal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. That takes me back to that movie. That's such a great movie. Even today, in oh, 2021, that movie. that movie is a freaking classic. Oh, my goodness. Rest Mr. Farley in peace. Oh. Uh, but what I'm saying, guys, is yes. don't get caught up in the weeds of, like, I don't know how to do that. I guess what I'm trying to share with you is if you have your numbers Learning right on the front end yeah. and the person is motivated to sell and needs to sell, not There's always. There's something in there that you can do. Correct. And if they're open to be creative. Yes. Even if that, if I could get to your, your number, would you be willing to be creative to get there? Yeah. You know, the, the real big caveat in some of this stuff with creative financing is it's a, a payday later, right? So can majority be. of these people, 
Yeah, there could be a structure where you give yep. them some money today and a lump sum later. Yep. Um, but if someone's like, I need to sell my home today to buy this other property, this is my That's number, tough. those are a little bit tougher. But yep. if they have a situation where maybe that doesn't have to be the case, but they're willing to be flexible yeah. and they can maybe walk away with some money today and a larger amount later, that's where this creative financing can happen. Mm -hmm. And that's where if you don't know even know what to do and even know how to have that conversation, you can just simply say, well, based on what you're telling me here today, it sounds like if, if we can get creative to get you this number, um, that's something you'd be open to. You know, it's that if statement, yeah. um, which has so much power. You're, <laughs> you're asking them to make a commitment without even giving an offer. Right. Um, there's just, there's magic in that as well. And that's that opportunity too, where you could say, if you're brand new, right? You could say, okay, well, it sounds like if I could get you your number and you'd be willing to get creative that we could come to some kind of an agreement right. here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to call one of my seasoned investor partners yes. that can help us kind of figure yes. out what will work. Cause I want to get you your number, but I can't injure myself. Correct. And so if you don't mind, I'm going to get, you know, so and so, yep. right? And I'm gonna bring them in and we're gonna make this work. How yeah. do you feel about that? I love it. You know, yeah. and they're on board. You know, and so here's where that next step is, mm -hmm. right? So let's see, we did our pre-work and we got our ARV and then we um, we talked about the tools and how to estimate the cost of the rehab right. and how to, um, what formulas to use and yeah. how to use the formulas. Yeah. And then talking about this, but here's where we get to the point where we could lose a deal because we look at it and on paper it's not a deal. Right. Or we can, on paper it is a deal and we take it down in some negotiating yeah. or we have to figure out that creative way. Yeah. So here's where, you know, you could take that fork in the road and Absolutely. if you are looking at something and those numbers aren't quite 100%, right. that's where maybe if you're not, if you're brand new and you're just not there yet, mm -hmm. bring someone in. Absolutely. And there's know, nothing wrong with that because if, if you if you built that rapport and you figure yeah. out the why and you're willing to help them, they're going to wait on you. Yeah. Uh, more times than not, I mean, you have to, but the reality is, is you have to analyze some of this stuff quickly to at least to assert, is this a straight cash deal? Is this right. a terms deal? If you go back home, take all your numbers, do all the work after the fact, and it's two, three days down the road and you call back your seller, one, two things are going to happen. They're going to ghost you because they've already <laughs> accepted another offer. Or when you call, they're going to say, I've taken another offer. So right. you need to, when, you, when you're there with your homeowner, and sometimes they may not be there, they might be remote, whatever, even if it's a phone conversation, you need to kind of spell all that out during that time and then move forward in the process. Give them or, that expectation. Yeah, or you figure it's just a no deal. And sometimes not every person you talk to is a deal. So understand that That's too, sure. right? You can't help everyone. <laughs> but the ones that are deals and they're motivated and they're open to being flexible – those are the people you want to spend the time with to generate these kind of unique terms deals. And that's where you bring in on another investor if you don't yeah. know what you're talking about. But you could lose it if you take too long to follow up or you don't set those expectations yeah. of when you will follow up properly. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Um, and I always just like to ask people, you know, when would you like me to follow up yep. with you? If it's, you know, if they want to consult with their yep. adult child or, you know, whatever, they want to bring someone in, maybe their spouse wasn't there or their business partner wasn't there mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, okay, well, when would you like me to follow up? Yep. And all right, I'm going to give you a call. I'm going to put it in my calendar. Right. You know, what's a good time of day? Yeah. You know, and just like, so now you're setting that expectation. And then if you blow that, yeah. that's where they might have For done sure. something else. But, yeah. you know, hopefully that's within the next day or two because yep. they, they can be contacted yeah. by someone else. Absolutely. Deal. Absolutely. So yeah. this should give you guys at least a good basis to be able to come in and evaluate. I mean, this is what we do in our business, right? So this is how you can evaluate deals like a pro and take down deals that other people cannot. So if you like this type of stuff, if you're in the Appleton area coming up, I don't know, what day is this, Jackie? November 16th. November 16th Woo. at the Double Tree in Appleton. We are playing, not a game, but it's the, the name of the, <laughs> the meeting is Deal or No Deal. Yeah. And this is actually be probably one of our cooler meetings because we're going to take real life scenarios yep. in front of the room of deals that we have taken down or haven't taken down. And why? And walking through why or why we didn't. Pictures numbers yeah. open books like here's what it looked like what does this look right. like is, does this one look like a deal 
you know, doesn't it? What could we do to make it a deal? You know, again, I always say it's okay to be a motivated seller, but it is never okay to be Correct. a motivated buyer. Absolutely. However, when you're using creative financing to make something that's maybe not a deal on paper into a deal, that's different. You're not just sense. saying, oh, well, I could probably get 10 more for it. Right. or Oh, I could skimp out on 10 grand of work. Yeah. That's bad. That's not how Correct. you make a no deal a deal. But if you're um, saving money on points and interest and oh, whatever else, yeah. right? Now that's a way that sometimes you can take something that's right there right. and it's almost a deal and you can turn it into a huge win for both you and the seller. Yep, bingo. So what I'd suggest, if you haven't already, go to appletonria.com. If you want to mm-hmm. come, if it's your first meeting, guess what? It's freaking free. <laughs> so come on out. You get your visitor's pass. You go online, print it off, show it to the desk when you get there. Uh, but if you really like what you're seeing there, and a lot of people do, or want to get uh, in with some of the, the discounts and the value of being a member of the Appleton RIA, all that information's online. We talked about a tool to help re- re- rehab. We can talk to you more about that and what that looks like and how you can start utilizing that tool. But AppletonRIA.com, your hub for all that great information. Otherwise, the 16th at 6.30, Doubletree in Appleton. Get there, hang out, have a good time with us, and uh, expand your knowledge to how to really evaluate deals and become more proficient in probably one of the most important skills in being a real estate investor. Absolutely. Doors open at 6. So yeah. If you get, can get there early, you can come and network and hang out and pizza. say hi to us. A little pizza, a little yeah. free pizza. Run to the bar quick and grab a, a soda or a cocktail. Whatever, yeah. A sip of whiskey with Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It's a good time had by all. So if there you want to come go. out, we look forward to seeing you. Both Jackie, Brett, and myself will be there. It'll be a great meeting, deal or no deal, uh, this Tuesday the 16th in November 2021 in Appleton. So. Holy cow. I know, right? Crazy. The year's coming to an end. Sure is. Great time to buy, though. I'm telling you. Oh, my gosh. I'm watching this market. Guys, I'm getting excited. Yeah. A little nervous for some things, but pretty excited for others. So I'm I'm watching this market shift. I'm watching it. it. You're seeing it. I'm seeing it as well. But I'll tell you this. Get excited, guys. Every year, and and real quick, and then we'll wrap this thing up, but every year, this time of year is probably some of the best time of year that I have of motivated sellers. We're, We're finding great conversations. We're getting great opportunities right now. If you're not active in this marketplace, I would just ask you why you're not really doing the due diligence. But we can talk more about that at the meeting. If you want to pick my ear, I'm I'm there to hang out as well. So enough said about that, guys. Have a great day. Hopefully this has been helpful. How to evaluate deals like a pro. You've been listening to the Appleton Ria podcast. We'll see you guys on the 16th at the Double Tree in Appleton. See ya. See ya. You've been listening to the Appleton Ria podcast. For more information and other episodes, visit us at AppletonRia.com.